I'm Jose Persico and welcome to The Melting Pot. This week we're coming to you from Plaza Antique, situated on Sherbrook Street East in the eastern borough of the city. I remember coming here as a little child to many wedding receptions, but it's changed a lot. And joining me is Julia Dimino, who is the co-owner and executive chef. Julia, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Right away he gets the espressos ready. The aroma is absolutely amazing. Gonna do a little cooking now, I guess. Absolutely. Who's in the kitchen for us here at Plaza? Franco Antique? Galliano is the chef here in Cuba. Okay, well, let's start cooking here on the melting pot here at Plaza Antique. Promotional consideration provided by Rose Hill Foods, the Flavor People, Padessa Group. The specialists in Italian brands. Plaza Management Group. Excellent reception hall service for all your celebratory needs. Pasta d'oro. Here we are in the kitchen at Plaza Antique. This is Chef Frank Galliano and his wonderful sous chefs, Isabel and Jean. Isabel and Jean, why don't you come here and say hi to everybody out there in Montreal? Isabel and Jean. Okay, Frank. Julia prepared a three-course meal. What are we going to start off? This, I understand, is the appetizer. Yeah, we're going to start off with some cold entrees. Okay. Um, now, the style that we're going for, we're trying to keep it fresh. We use very seasonal ingredients. I could see the basket of fresh goods over here. That's so right. we're going to start with some uh, atiyah of grilled vegetables. Grilled vegetables that we got on the grill happening here. Yeah, with, that with John's Jean. taking care of. Okay, and? And the other dish that we're going to be making is a tapas-style dish where we have three different compartment uh, style plates that we're going to have three different basic different meals okay that's it. something so hot and something cold okay let's go where do we begin what's first well look we're going to have the grilled vegetables grilled vegetables with gonna... over here yeah. oh Thank look you. at look at these wonderful vegetables grilled vegetables okay go ahead with that what do you do with that a little seasoning. season them some fresh ground pepper Market fresh and obviously vegetables in season, which you always work with as well. Always right? very, very important to us. You know, good good quality ingredients is very important. What you put in is what you get out. Okay, that's olive oil. So we try to keep it simple. We don't, you know, we try not to camouflage our, our ingredients at all. We try to use as, you know, the, the ingredients be as fresh as possible. And that's, okay. that's the secret to our to our success. And obviously presentation is the key, right? Presentation right? presentation is very important. So where did you learn how to cook? Uh, well, we've been I've been cooking for many years actually. Uh, went to school, I studied here in Montreal, Started studied at uh, La Salle College in Hotel. La Salle Food. College, I like it. Okay, once we're finished with this, we yell yeah. at someone or just throw yeah, it anywhere? Yeah, just throw it anywhere. There you go, Jean. Okay, so that would be plate number one. Do you put a little design yeah. on it? We use a little reduced uh, balsamic glaze. Oh. It's uh, slightly sweet, a little bit tart, but it, it, it gives a little, uh, it gives a nice finish. Oh, look it gives at a, that. It gives a nice finish to the dish really? and it adds a little contrast to really? it. You know what I would do? I don't know, just because I'm kind of, you know, want to make some trouble for you. I'd put little dots in the corners there. Would that, would that work with Julia? Would he get mad at me if I did that? You know that? what? He'd probably get mad at you because he'd say the waiters would put their fingers on it when they're serving the customers. Oh, oh <laughs> good point. But look, he is right. But we have to carry this. So this would be dish number one. This is dish number one. And this one. would be grilled vegetable mini platter. Okay, good. What's next? Okay, we're going to start. We're going to have a prosciutto and melon. Prosciutto and melon. Isabel, prosciutto and melon. Look at this. Prosciutto is a Italian ham. Yeah. Right, we could say. It's it's here. Yeah. And the best one would be Parma prosciutto, right? Yeah, a Parma-style uh, ham. Comes from Italy, obviously. Uh, it's cured. Mm -hmm. Excellent. It's little, sl slightly salted. Okay. But it's excellent. Okay, excellent. So show us how you do that. So we're going to plate this. And you're using cantaloupe, which yep. are... cantaloupe that's been marinated with a little fresh basil, a little salt, and a little pepper. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You're marinating cantaloupe. Yeah, fresh. just try to give it a little different and, and twist. And a little oil, olive oil, I would imagine. And a little, and a little olive oil. Okay. We'll make a nice little rosette with the prosciutto. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. okay. The, the tomato and bocconcini, okay? Fresh sliced tomatoes. The bocconcini is well sliced, just a little olive oil, a little salt, a little pepper. This is, a, it could be a plate for the vegetarians out there. This definitely could. Okay. This definitely yeah. could. So you're making this, a, a little... Uh, Sandwich of tomatoes and bocconcino. That's right. It's a triple decker. A little montage of sorts. Okay. Okay. There you go. Tomato. More bocconcino. So you're stacking it up nicely. Number two. I'm interested Number to this. see what you're going to do with the trio to complement the trio. Okay. Would be what? Finish this. Okay, good. To finish the trio. This we don't need anymore. I, no, we're going to top it with a little basil. Basil. 
Basil, please. Oh, there you basil, go. Basil, a nice fresh leaf of basil. By the way, it smells amazing. It smells of fresh basil. You uh, can't beat that. Okay, and the final, and the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little flambe of shrimp. Oh, I like flambe shrimp. Okay, tiger shrimp. What type of shrimp? These are black tiger shrimp that we've blanched. Okay, in uh, some boiling water, a little salt, a little pepper, okay. a little parsley. Okay. We're gonna saute a little green onion. And do you have to blanch them, or is it? Is that what this recipe calls for? You shouldn't so just put them directly in, in a you pan. Could, they could be done directly in the pan. We try not to color them too much okay. so that the, they stay nice and firm. And you always leave the tail? Uh, we prefer to serve it with the tail. It gives a more homey, more rustic oh, okay. feel sure, to the dish. All right, so that pot is hot. I am a little olive oil, I would imagine. A little olive oil. Uh, this is where we get the flame happening here at Plaza Antique. I love that. Okay, and then we put them in there. We're going to add a few shrimp. Go ahead. How many? Uh, maybe half of them. How's that? There you go. Perfect. Is that good? We're going to get this nice and hot. Okay. A little cognac. Cognac. Should I stand back? Yeah, maybe. A uh... little drum roll here. Here we go. We're going to add the cognac off the heat. Always off the heat when you pour your alcohol, ladies and gentlemen. And then there it goes. Yeah, Look at that. Base. Wow. And this is a very quick Yeah, it's just, cooking ju it's just a simple heating. And then we have to just plate plate the dish. The, sh the shrimps are cooked, so we just need That's to warm right. them slightly. We start with, a, we put a little fresh lettuce on the bottom. Okay. This is a uh, tortilla shell that we've, uh, that we've fried okay. to shape it that way. And you make all way. the premises. Yeah, that's all made here. We try, we try to make everything from scratch. It keeps, it keeps, it keeps the economy rolling, keeps our employees working, and uh, we find it best that way. Wow, there you go. get a better product. There you, and, and what are you going to do with these wonderful uh, green onions? Well, these we're just going to sprinkle. We're just going to put a few on the top here. And do you have your version of a BAM, you know, like Emerald? Do you do BAM at any time? Like, well, would you what, do, would you what, put... what we like to do is we just put a little fresh olive oil okay. over the tomato and the cheese. Okay. Keep it simple, a little parsley. A little parsley. And this is just... And that's it. This is just the appetizer, folks. And I noticed that Frank always has a sharp knife next to him. Is that very, like, it's very important. Whoever walks into your kitchen that you don't like, I hope. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's... Plate number one, appetizer number one here at Plaza Antique. This looks absolutely amazing. This is almost a meal in itself. Well, definitely. This could be served like this or it could be served individually there you as, go. as the client. Okay. Well, we'll take desire. a little break and we're going to have dish number two when we come back. Stay with us here on The Melting Pot. Promotional consideration provided by Click International, food from the four corners of the globe. Chiat, transcending time for 60 years. Sacred Heart School, the Sacred Heart School of Montreal celebrating 150 years of excellence in education in 2010-2011. Saputo, a family tradition since 1954. CMC Imports, Bruno and Nick Distributors. Okay, meal number two, or dish number two with Frank Galliano, we're going to make, obviously, pasta. Yep. And you chose, what are these? Fusilli? These, these are, are cavatelli. Cavatelli and some rotinis. Those are fusilli. All our pasta is oh, fresh. All right. It's all homemade pasta. Homemade pasta. On the yep. premises. On the premises. Okay, so what goes in these wonderful pasta dishes? Okay, the first pasta that we're going to make is a fusilli dish with rapini and prosciutto. Okay. We're just going to... Fusillis are these little things here, twirls. Yeah, with some prosciutto. A little prosciutto you and a little rapini. Pancetta, routine. I would imagine. Pancetta, whatever, whatever you have on hand that you like or feel comfortable with, give it a. We're gonna we're gonna saute it a little bit. Olive oil. A little olive oil, Italian cooking. Olive oil goes without saying. So we saute a little bit of our pancetta. Prosciutto. Uh, our prosciutto, excuse me. Okay, and this is? This is rapini. Which is a, a version of the broccoli family. Yeah. But it's an Italian vegetable, rapini. Very and bitter, but very tasty. Very tasty. And good for you, right, Frank? Excellent for okay. you. Very high, very high in fiber. And what, what rapini does is it's, it's a little bitter, but the saltiness of the prosciutto complements it well. So it's a wonderful blend. A little, right? a little garlic. A little garlic. Or a lot of garlic. It depends or a lot on of what garlic. Like. It depends on the on the person. A little salt. A pinch of salt. Some 
fresh pepper. Once this is almost ready, can I have the fusilli, please? Fusilli, please, which have been cooked. Isabel with a lovely fusilli. Thank you, Isabel. Now, pasta should be al dente always. Always. Very important. Which means you don't want to overcook your pasta. No, no. The pasta should be al dente. We put it in the water for just a few minutes. It's been blanched as well. That's right. Uh, you have to understand here, when we serve, we serve several hundred people. So sometimes you have to... Uh, you have, food. you have to pre-cook food in order for it to be ready and that everybody eat at the same time. That's right. Because efficiency is part of the practice here. Yeah. At Plaza Antique. Now, I'm, I would imagine you're going to add a sauce to this, Frank. This is, is a very simple pasta that we cook like this. We don't add any sauce oh, so to this. this. A, oh, it's, nice. it's served in white, okay? We we'll add some fresh Parmesan cheese. That's and you get the, the true flavor of the ingredients that are, that's in here. And that's all. Uh, now we we'll plate, plate it. Plate it. And notice the wonderful dishes that they have here at Plaza Antique because pasta should be served in a bowl. Right? Tradi time. Traditionally, Ita Italians eat their pasta always in a bowl. Oh, and that smells wonderful. So you get you that smell of that roasted garlic. That was so simple to me. Once again, we have rapini. We have prosciutto. A little bit of olive oil, some garlic, yeah, black pe black pepper, a little salt, and that's and, it. and and I'm gonna call I'm gonna call Julio to to great this because look, he's the only person that can work this wonderful contraption. And as Julio grates the wonderful Parmesan cheese, we top it off again with a little extra virgin olive oil. A little oil, olive oil, yeah, that's it. And there Pun you go, punte basta. This is pasta number one. Cavatelli's next. What yeah. goes into the cavatelli? Okay. The cavatelli. Ca the cavatelli that we're going to make tonight is is uh, in a rosé sauce. Okay. Okay. With a little mushrooms. You could use any type of mushrooms. Or yeah, we uh, we shiitake mushrooms. Or you know what? Something uh, something like a uh, porcini mushroom or an oyster mushroom would work very well. Okay. okay. The same thing. We're going to sauté our mushrooms. Again, olive oil. Olive oil. Always the first ingredient. We have our mushrooms. Just saute these a little bit. We'll get these going. And how many variety of pasta dishes would you say you 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 have here at Plaza Antique? Oh, it's endless. We've really? made uh, endless numbers varieties of pasta. We make long pasta, short pasta. We've made we make stuffed pastas, fazzoletti, cannelloni, the traditional. And it's all homemade. The traditional stuff, yeah, all homemade. Now, would it be, uh, you know, a little white wine in there to flavor it up again, or actually, or we're gonna it? we're gonna use a little vodka. Vodka. Yeah, well, we that use is a, different. We use a little vodka in this dish. That's a cool looking bottle, by the way. Are you sure it's vodka? Yeah, this is vodka. We try often. We try to encourage uh, local suppliers products that are made here in Quebec. Okay. Uh, and this is a Canadian product, made a local product, right in Quebec. Okay, good. And I can see that you really went at it because there's hardly any left. Here, that's Frank. that's that's part that's part of uh, part saw, of cooking. I saw Julia working on this bottle earlier in the show. <laughs> All right, so we put the vodka in here. Oh, we're gonna add a little garlic. We add the garlic in. Right. Now, is this gonna flambe? It will, so we'll take this off the heat. Okay, and we put the put the vodka in. How much? Oh, maybe enough? a little oh, bit more. Ah, why not? Let's go nuts. There That's it is. Finish it. There we Whoa, go. Whoa, look at that. Hello. Okay. And we're done with the bottle. We're done with the vodka. Now we're going to add a little bit of this our... This is fresh tomato sauce? Fresh tomato sauce. Italian tomatoes. Little basil, little garlic. Again, a little bit of olive oil. That looks very simple. We keep it nice and simple. And and simplicity is the key, right, Frank? I mean, that's that's the key to any style of cooking, isn't to, it? To, to a lot of our dishes, good ingredients, simple ingredients. Okay, so once again, mushrooms, a little bit of garlic. We put vodka in there, and this is going to be cavatelli. And now you're putting cream. I put a little bit of cream, yes. This is creates the rosé sauce that you were talking about. Yeah. It, cha it changes the uh, it changes the dish to give it a more uh, a more a softer flavor. Right. And for those who are lactose intolerant, you could do away with the cream. Definitely, definitely. And you could use a lactose-free milk. I would imagine. You could you could Skin use milk. you could use soy milk. Soy you, milk. There's many different ways to do it, but it's the 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 cream is not even necessary in this okay. dish. 
Isabel with the Cavatelli. Hi, Isabel. Thank you. And this we take them out here. That one. And once away. again, you want to slightly cook them because they've been pre-cooked. Yeah, just a few minutes, just to warm is all it takes. And, then we and you often place them in the pan always. with the sauce. Always. always, always. So you should always mix your pasta in the pan with your sauce. I find that as opposed to putting the sauce on. over. On top. We'll pass on top. I find doing it this way, you get a lot more of the uh, flavor. Oh, I see. And it on, mixes well onto your pasta, onto the noodles. Right. Whereas where you, when you just top the white pasta, it doesn't always get all the flavor that you're that you're looking for. You know, oh, okay. it, it 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 only covers the dish to some degree. Okay, we're about to plate this baby as well. I'm gonna plate this. Now we're just gonna turn this off, let it rest a few seconds. A little bit of fresh basil. Fresh basil, look at that chopping motion. Obviously, you, you've been practicing. Ah, a little bit, a little okay. bit, a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of the basil to this. We're going to stir it, it up. Comes. We'll bring the plate around. And I think Julia showed me how to do this, so I think I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. he, he gave you the 411 on he, it? He did, indeed. Give me the, how, how old is this grater, by the way? Uh, well, some of the things are a little old. <laughs> it's a little. But, uh, <laughs> obviously, obviously they, they, this is a working kitchen. It, it is called Plaza Antique for a reason, because this is an <laughs> antique over here. I, I, don't, I don't, something something my principal would use on me back in my day. So we just do this, right? A little, a little of this. Oh, we don't want to do that. Wait, often, we, oftentimes we crumble a little bit of par parmesan oh, too so on I, our so, dishes. So I had the right idea then. The idea works as well. There you go. Look, a little of, a little of. Uh, oh, this is wonderful. A little fresh yeah. parmesan. Maybe again. I should. Maybe I should have let Julia do this. There you go. <laughs> and there you have it. And top it with a little basil. You get from the heat from the pasta gives it a nice aroma. And once again, fusilli with a little prosciutto and rapini and rapini and of course the cavatelli in the rosé sauce. Just two of the many pasta dishes that this gentleman and the rest of the staff here at Plaza Antique serve. We have another dish for you, believe it or not. One more dish when we come back. Stay with us as The Melting Pot continues. Promotional consideration provided by Raymond Weil, Watches of Geneva, Switzerland. Linter Marche Lagoria, three locations to serve you best. Tiamo Entertainment, to set the mood right for all your celebrations. BMW Laval, where joy is refusing to wait. Signature Vodka. Okay, dish number three, and Frank has promised us meat. Lots of meat. Lots of meat, okay. Nice filet mignon. Where is the beef, as uh, that person said once upon a time? So what are we going to make? I see I see your meat is there. Yeah, we have filet mignon and we have a rack of, lamb, uh, rack of veal, sorry. Rack of veal, that yeah. is kind of interesting. Okay, rack of veal. Yeah. I had rack of lamb, but rack of veal here. Yeah. We like to do things different here, Pleasant Well, we try, to, we try to switch it up a little okay. bit. So, once again, the ingredients. We season them a little bit. Now, why are you seasoning your meat prior to cooking? I'm told it's a taboo. You know... Those, Does it tenderize a, the meat? There's different schools of thought on that. I, I, I prefer to season it before and I season it again after. Okay. But then, and for all you wonderful viewers out there, this is kind of semi pre cooked. This is or just, just seared. You just seared it very yeah. lightly. Just to seal in the flavor. Not even like a minute. Just just to let you know that it is pre cooked. Okay. And we're going to prepare a risotto dish next to it. Yeah. We started that a little. Tell us what goes into the risotto. Okay. Sun dried tomatoes? Sun dried tomatoes. A little bit of uh, mascarpone, torta mascarpone which is a uh, Italian cheese Italian cheese that's okay. right little garlic little shallot little okay. sun-dried tomato so all the ingredients you see here went into this risotto because uh, you know time constraints all right and we're gonna put this all in a wonderful shell uh, these which are we'll talk about yeah, later. these are some of our uh, our, our accessories our, our accessories okay. to accessorize the dish okay. as they say I, I smell something burning well no. smoking hot pan essential okay. oh, when you want to sear it that's when, right when you're searing the meat oh you want Th that those, those are the sounds that you want that you want to hear now now Frank I've noticed that you have veal and beef cooking in the same pan is is that a problem with the flavors no. or is that recommended no. no as long as your pan is hot enough that the meat does not uh does not boil or the juices don't come out it's got to be like you said it's got to so, be a smoking hot pan you so see it's sizzling okay. it seals in the juices 
There's no blood. There's no so no there's transfer. There's no marriage of flavors there happening None because the, the, pan, the pan is hot. Yeah. So None you want whatsoever. a hot pan. All right, there you go. Okay. No wine, no liquor, no not, booze in that not, one. Not, not for this preparation. Okay, what else? What can yeah. I do here as you cook? No, we're just we're just going to... Besides, stand out of the way. Look how quickly that went. Whoa! It doesn't take very long. you got to step away sometimes because it does get hot, and that's what you want. You want that nice little, little and, brown And, and this uh, was a filet mignon you mentioned? Yeah, this filet is mignon. a beef tenderloin. Beef tenderloin. Um, good product. Okay. It's, a, it's a leaner piece of meat where there's not a lot of, not a lot of fat. Okay. That's why we tend to cook it a little bit on the medium side so that it stays nice and juicy. And my question to you, you you're serving a, a horde of people, 300 to 400 guests. If they all want it, medium rare, rare, well done, how does that work? You know what? We tell our guests we're going to cook it the way you're going to eat it. The way you're going to eat it. You know, we do the majority of our meat is cooked medium. We know who's the boss here at Plaza Antique. We have some that are left raw. And last minute somebody says, you know what, I want mine rare. No problem. We throw it on the grill. Uh, we finish it a la minute. Somebody says, I want one. Well done. Not a problem. We take this and take it a little further. You ever get mad and go outside and, and tell them that's not supposed to be never. well done? Meat? Never. Never. Now we how, take With a face like this, how can he get mad? Look at that. All right, let's go. Let's continue on here. We take this. We put it in the oven just to finish off the well, cooking. How many degrees in the oven? Put it in a 350 degree oven for a, about 15 You have to do that? Yeah. This okay. is how we finish the cooking. So co Okay. And you have a brown sauce okay. cooking here. Yeah, we have, a little, we have a little sauce simmering in the back. Tell us what the what the, uh, entails is, in this brown this sauce. This is a demi glass sauce. We start, we start our stocks during the week. Okay. Uh, all our stocks. stocks. Yeah. Blue chip stocks. Yeah. Little joke there. I wish. I wish. <laughs> we start our stocks all made from bones. You know, our, our mirepoix vegetables. We start our stocks during the week. and by Chicken the end, bones, beef bones. Yeah. And everything's homemade. And That's everything's what you guys homemade. do. That's why we keep our employees working. We keep them busy during the week. Okay, good. Should we whisk this sauce or is it okay like this? No, we're going to leave this. We're going to let it sit for a little bit. Okay. We'll start getting the vegetables ready. And when do we get our risotto ready? Or is it ready already? We're going to put our risotto on. Oh, we'll you see, I'm not paying attention, huh, Frank? Always. You have to be always paying attention. I could be a sous chef here, right? We'll get some of these ingredients. He doesn't answer that question, We're going to get some of these ingredients, of course. We're going to try again. Of Can course, I do... oh, of okay. course, of course, of course. Julia, I'll get you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so you're putting, I, I lost track. You put all the sun-dried tomatoes, yep. you put onions in there. A little right? onion, a little Did garlic. Did you put a base of olive oil, I would imagine? Yep, always. That's, our, that's always our first ingredient. Okay, right. We're going to saute this a little bit. Grab myself a spoon here. And this was, once again, risotto, which was pre-cooked. We got this started so right. that it would, it would be easier for this, for this, uh, segment, for this segment right. of that's the right. show. That's right, because we're working with time here. The yeah. magic of TV. That's right. We'll get that so going. So that's risotto. And this is going to we, be... We have, our, we have our stock in the back. Stock is doing good here. We have our stock here in the back that we, we start adding slowly. A little bit of water. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a chicken stock. Chicken stock. That okay. we make like a cool bouillon. A little okay. bit of chicken, some vegetables, carrots, a little celery. And it gets our, it gets our rice going. Okay, this, I feel we're almost ready. These, these, this, this we're going to finish off with a little bit of that torta mascarpone. That was that Italian cheese that Italian you were talking cheese. about. And you could add any other type of cheese if you yeah. don't like uh, any, mascarpone. Any cheese, it, you know what, it adds a little bit of a uh, creaminess. Right. And the the, uh, and the, flavor the gorgonzola that's mixed with the mascarpone adds a little bit oh. of the sharpness. We're going to just saute the vegetables real quick. What type of vegetables do you have going here? Okay. I have a couple of no. Those are the grilled vegetables from before. Oh, these are like carrots. These are. This is a mixture of vegetables: little carrots, a little celery, a little uh, gr green, green pepper, pepper, a little onion. We get that going. Very simple. Every once in a while, we check. We check our, on the beef. We check on How's our meat. How's the beef doing? And see how our meat is looking. Here, our meat is starting to come together. Still got a, a little bit, a little ways to go. The sauce is ready. The sauce is ready. Our rice is ready. We're almost there. We have a few turned potatoes. These were pre-boiled. Yep, these are pre-boiled. We add a little bit of butter to this. A little dollop of butter. Just to bring everything together. And then we have just a plate. 
this nice and hot. Wow. Now what we're using in this dish is a, is a tortilla. Again, that we've, that we've fried and turned into a, a sort of basket. Right. That we fill with our vegetables. And this is gonna be served with our, with our uh, rack of veal. Again, all the marriage of flavors that seem to complement each other very well. Okay. Okay, this we're gonna throw in here. Get this ready for vegetables for our second dish. And there's little Julia with the finishing touch, a nice little green. And the lamb, the meat is gonna go there. The meat is coming out. What we have here, this is our vegetables for our second dish. It's a spaghetti of vegetables, actually. Really? Yeah. Almost like a ratatouille. Very similar, very similar. Ratatouille. Did you watch Ratatouille, the movie, by the way? Excellent. Excellent like movie. It, eh? My kids loved it. Yeah, they do it right. Ratatouille, the movie. Okay, so that is a spaghetti vegetable. Again. Which really is finely, thinly chopped. So thinly chopped that it needs just a second on the heat just to warm over slightly. That's you still do not want to overcook it. No, because it will, it will melt of sorts. Really? Okay. And there yeah. you go. Nicely seasoned, a little salt. Pepper. That's ready. This we will turn off. And we're getting ready to dish the final, final presentation here. Second dish. At Plaza Antique. This is the risotto. And this is the risotto. Oh, the aromas are absolutely... A little bit of that. Wow. Frank, that's good stuff. Now we have our meat. And here comes the beef. Once again, rack of veal and filet mignon, and which filet is kind of interesting. Our rack of veal will be served standing up. Oh, look at that. And again, our nice filet mignon. There you go. On the dish, seasoned and cooked to perfection. And there's your one wonderful spaghetti vegetables. With the spaghetti vegetable on the side. That'll be coming right off. Wow. We'll finish the dish. And when does that gravy go in? Nice little sauce. And here comes the sauce. The finishing touch. The sauce. We got the sauce. sauce lightly on both meats lightly covering the meat so this is a sauce that complements both veal then and beef it'll go very well with either and there you have it and is that it a little finishing touch a little finishing touch we have a little we have a little flower oh, you put the flower the flower you put look at that little flower. Julia was here there you go this is it, it so this is meal number three at Plaza mm -hmm. Frank congratulations good job pleasure in all a that pleasure that's it for this edition of The Melting Pot. As always, we'll see you in another kitchen next week. In the meantime, bon appetit. I'm Jose Persico. Take care. Promotional consideration provided by Rose Hill Foods, the flavor people. Advanced Biomechanical Rehabilitation Center, AL Limited. Raymond Weil, Watches of Geneva, Switzerland. Sacred Heart School. The Sacred Heart School of Montreal celebrating 150 years of excellence in education in 2010-2011. Plaza Antique. Chiat, transcending time for 60 years. Tiamo Entertainment, to set the mood right for all your celebrations. Saputo, a family tradition since 1954. Lintermarché Lagoria, three locations to serve you best. Padessa Group, the specialists in Italian brands. Click International, food from the four corners of the globe. BMW Laval, where joy is refusing to wait. Mose Persico's wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. And I remember coming here as a, as a little boy, attending all sorts of wedding receptions. Oh, that's why all the gray hair, right? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a sous chef here, right? He doesn't answer that question, does he? We're going to get some of these ingredients? Of course. <laughs> We're going to try again. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Julia, I'll get you.